the mulberry silk cop and professor nayar dr nayar undergone a training program in japan university of agriculture and technology tokyo japan from 2005 to almost uh, 25 days training program and he visited abroad japan and china and he is a recipient of the several awards a world intellectual property organization award in the year 2005 nrdc technology award in the year 2004 india china overseas scholarship award in the year 2002 ETS CSR Best Scientist Award in the year 2019, CSR Ante Annual Day Award in the year 2008, and there are five awards: NSSO Annual Performance Award in the 2009, 10, 2010 11, 2011 12, 2012 to 13. and 2015 to 16 dr k sashindra nayar has published a international and national level articles altogether 74 research articles he has published and presented several the abstract in the conference the 51 and two books published one book edited and total of 137 the scientific contribution from the dr sashindra nair and he has a three different patents namely sampurna samruddhi and nutrit and conference attended about 27 different conferences all over india in different places and presently dr k sashindra nair is working exclusively on planning and monitoring of bivoltan and multivoltan basic seed organization and distribution in nssso and also monitoring the parental seed production marketing management of commercial hybrids execution of private participation in bivoltan silkom seed production drawing strategies for silkom seed sectors <coughs> and its continual reforms training in techno legal aspects of central seed act enterprise development in mulberry silkom seed sector uh, this is the uh, scientific contribution and achievement of dr k sashindra nayar sir with this brief introduction i would like to welcome dr k sashindra nayar sir to deliver a talk on the opportunity Enter, uh, enterprise opportunities in mulberry silkom seed sector before that handing over the session to dr nayar i welcome our uh, uh, professor hp manjunath also for this uh, uh, session <coughs> and now i request uh, uh, dr k sashindra nayar sir to take over this session i welcome you sir again Am I seen properly? Yes, sir. Am I seen properly? Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's great. सबको मेरा नमस्कार. ये लड़को नमस्कार. And uh, good morning, everybody. My friend, Dr. Jitesh Kumar, Dr. Sanapa, Professor Manjunath, H. B. Manjunath, and also D. Manjunath. Both of uh, Uh, professors retired and the working professor and uh, my dear friends all my mentors and uh, senior colleagues in central support research students and uh, uh, investigators in various departments my senior directors retired directors mentors dr angadi dr basavaraj i see a lot of faces in fact i started shivering my legs when i see lots of uh, big big faces when uh, professor sanappa sought a small or brief resume from me i did not think that uh, i did not ever think that i would be shamed like this by reading it out fully thank you very much uh, dr jagdish anyway 
Thank you, sir. <laughs> it's all right. And uh, I just felt really privileged when uh, Professor Sanapa called me and said that uh, I can, I need to deliver a lecture uh, on a topic of my choice. My first choice and my first love would naturally be insect physiology or silkworm physiology in specific. But I thought I would just move away from my regular topic and talk on something else. Because basic science is very interesting. Practical science is fantastic. But if I can talk something on something else where science is married to business, I thought that would be futuristic. And that's why today's topic. And before um, today's topic means, as uh, Jagadish already told, it is enterprise uh, opportunity, enterprise opportunity in silkworm, mulberry silkworm seed sector. I'm not talking in general about sericulture, not in general about mulberry sericulture. It would be only about mulberry silkworm seed sector. Before moving on to the presentation, I will take a little one minute from you and uh, I would dedicate this talk to my dear friend, Dr. M.G. Sabida, who left us three weeks back because of COVID. I, I feel extremely astonished to, to hear that, now, uh, that uh, news. I thought I would share it with you. She was my fellow scientist. She was heading regional sericulture station, Bangalore. She was my colleague, she was my fellow scientist, and she was my neighbor above all. And this presentation is in dedication of the fond memories of my dear friend. Shall I just move on to the presentation? Yes, sir. The slide is seen properly. Fine, sir, fine. That's great. Now today's topic is enterprise opportunities in mulberry silkworm seed sector. And I am the person who present this. My name is written there. Please look at this picture. You would be wondering why this mad guy is putting all this picture here. You must be knowing every one of them. Even if you know, I thought I would just write what they mean. They are entrepreneurs who scripted unbelievable stories. Let's first move on to the first name. This is Dheeraj Lal Hirachand Ambani, popularly known as Dhirubhai Ambani, the most astonishing story in India from rags to riches. In 1958, when he started a small business, a textile trading business, with the 50,000 rupees in his kitty, nobody thought that his company would be the first one to enter Forbes 500 list. Great story. And then let us move to Kochausep Chitilapalli. When in 1978, in the garage of his house, when he started producing voltage stabilizer with the help of two workers, we never thought that he would be at the helm of two big companies in India, that is, Vigar Industries and Wonderla Amusement Parks. Great story again. And he is a wonderful human being also. You know, he donated one of his kidneys to a poor worker who was no way related to him. So all entrepreneurs carry big hearts and kind hearts. Move on to Kiran Majumdar Shah, a fermentation scientist who wanted to become a doctor, but never could be. And she knocked at the doors of many industries where she could be appointed as the master brewer in the liquor making. Nobody allowed her in because that was the male bastard. Disillusioned, disinterested, she thought she would start her own business. And today she is the history, owning two big companies, biotechnology and pharmacological company. You must be knowing Biocon and Sinjin. And look at this young chap. P.C. Mustafa, if you are people who eat idlis and uh, dosas, and if you ever try ready-made idli dosa batter, you must remember this guy. He is P.C. Mustafa, the owner of ID 
fresh foods. In a remote village in Kerala, in fact, in Wayanad near Kalpacha, when he started dreaming, but he only continued dreaming, he failed in sixth standard, but went on to become the student of NIT Calicut and IIM Bangalore. And now his business is 400 crores. He started with 50,000 rupees and supplied idli dosa batter to his neighborhood. And then come to Patricia Narayan. She was selling eateries, including Katlekai Bija at Marina Beach. And 20 years ago, her daily earning was 50 paise. And now she is the owner of Sandifa chain of hotels. She earns daily two lakhs. And she had to fight a lot of odds. Move on to Prem Ganapati. Have you ever heard of Dosa Plaza? This man was taken to Mumbai one of, by one of his relatives and he was made stranded there. He wanted to return, but he had no money. Refusing to yield and refusing to get defeated, he, he moved on and just worked as a boy, tea vending boy in a tea stall. Now he owns 77 outlets of most popular dosa outlets called Dosa Plaza. And if you go to any airport, you will see a Dosa Plaza and he earns crores. Do you think that I have placed this picture to see all of you as great entrepreneurs like this? Don't mistake me, never. I have no such intention. My intention was only to draw your attention. And except there is a, there is a purpose to remind you of these great entrepreneurs because enterprise originates from ideas and enterprise originates from persons. And during the course of this talk, our pursuit will be to find out an opportunity that must be most probably from Silkworm seed set. And before talking anything, I would say that India is a great country with the great help of MSME. You must be knowing about MSME history of India. And MSME stands for micro, small, and medium enterprise. We talk about small business because small things make the largest impact in the history of humankind. And just look at that. This is the way MSME sectors is divided. You want to start a micro enterprise if you are investing not more than one crore, and if your annual turnover is five crores, then you will be classified as micro enterprise. And if your investment is a little less than maybe less than 10 crores and the turnover 50 crores, then it will be classified as a small enterprise. And medium enterprise, actually that's a little bigger enterprise, an investment of not more than 50 crores and uh, turnover of 250 crores, less than 250 crores. Anything above, this is classified as normal industry. You know what? In India, almost 99.99% of industries belong to MSME. Only the remaining is, remaining is already around 500 odd companies registered and they form a very small percent. And among these, micro industries are 99.4%. And small industries are only 0.52%. And medium industries, 0.007%. You can imagine where tiny things play a big role. And let us move on to the next thing, what is written on the side. And this MSME contributes 30 lakh crore to the India's GDP. Unbelievable, 30 lakh crores to the India's GDP. And 6.3 crores of MSME as on 31st December 2019, 63.4 million MSMEs in India as of December, and they contribute together 30% of India's GDP. And again, contributes to 33% of manufacturing output and 45% of India's exports. And India's MSMEs employ 12 crore people. This is the most important item in this. They employ 12 crore people. And MSME scripts big history. And whenever we start to talk about silk or silkworm, this is the first thing coming onto our mind. Ladies draped in saris or wrapped in saris. 
and we will think only about sarees. But sarees is the ultimate product or maybe the last end of the product at the business end, I would say. And to reach there, we have to walk a lot of miles. And where do we stand? Just look at this table, where India stands in the global silk production. Sorry. Just let me see the annotation. Is there anybody to help me there? Sir, I just need to make annotations. I'm not sir, annotation, annotation has disabled, sir. You can use your mouse. No, no. Can you please? Why do? Why do you uh, disable the annotation? Please help me in doing that. I don't think it's fair to just. Uh, Disable the annotation for a presenter. Sir, in 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 our uh, system, admin he has disabled. Sir, now he has not. Uh, so. But this is not proper. You cannot uh, disable sort of for an incapacitated presenter like this. Anyway, okay, I'll try to manage this. Please look at this table, and China is at the top. China has been at the top for quite long, and in the year 2015. They produced 170 crore raw silk. And in the year 2015, when uh, in during a similar one discourse, one participant asked me, when would India beat China? And my first answer was, uh, not in my, my lifetime. And uh, then in the next breath, in the same breath, I told him, for India to beat China, China should stop production and India should continue to grow. But I was totally wrong. Now, looking back, I thought my answer was wrong. Look at this number four. From 2015 to 2019, in China has been steadily degrowing. This never happens in any agriculture sector. China has been steadily degrowing and India has been steadily growing. And India at number two and China at uh, number one. We have got Brazil just above that, but Uzbekistan with 1,800 uh, uh, metric ton raw silk, maybe at the third or fourth position, and then have you have Vietnam. Doesn't matter. So if this is the trend, the, it may not be long, uh, many 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 years uh, in China in India overtaking China. This is the global story. And, but whatever we say, we have been importing a lot of silk for the last five or six years, you can see, even the last year, we have imported 3,315 tons of raw silk. And on the other hand, we have also exporting finished garments. So we are earning a foreign exchange, but we are importing great quantities of raw silk. And this is, where the place of enterprise lies. If the demand is there, if the gap between export and import lies, and import is more than what we produce inside, inside our country, there lies the enterprise opportunity. India continues as a net raw silk importer. And in the year 2019-20, India imported 3315 metric ton, and that's about 83% of uh, the total raw silk uh, uh, import that 83% of this was mulberry rosin. We have now narrowed down the import over the past few years. It was much more than this. It implies a sericulture country, India has been growing at a very steady pace. From 2009-10 to 2019-20, our India's domestic rosin production grew from 18,370 metric ton to 35,820 metric ton. That is a very, very decent compounded annual growth rate of close to 7%. And India has now decided that we will try to narrow this very much and we will be self-reliant and going forward, 
we will be producing import substitute raw silk in India itself so that we need not over dependent on other countries. The country is preparing the ground to gallop to the next level. India would expand the mulberry holding to match the targeted raw silk production. The single point remedy to the malady of over dependence on raw silk import is domestic production of import substitute raw silk, as I've already mentioned, and this is known to you also very well. And look at India's raw silk production target. From 2019-20, this has to move to 40, yeah, in 27,000 metric ton to 42,300 42, metric ton mulberry raw silk by the year 2029-30. Okay, we also have to have Tassar raw silk target similarly. By the year 29-30, the Tassar raw silk production will be 11,350 metric ton. And in the case of Eri, no, it is Eri is 11,350, and Tassar raw silk will be around 6,000 metric ton, and Muga only, because that is the most endemic silk what we have. Uh, that's about the four, 470 metric ton by the year 2029-30. And the mulberry Russell production, if you break up between five volt in Russell and the crossbreed Russell, our total target by the year 2930 will be 42,300 metric ton. And out of that, the five volt in uh, Russell will be 20,000 metric ton, and the crossbreed Russell will be 22,300 metric ton. Put together, 42,300 metric ton. We have to grow very steadily and very fast to reach this milestone. Let us move on to the next slide. This slide is the vertical or the organic linkage among the sericulture sectors for sustainable growth. We will be, we will not be rather examining all these verticals individually or collectively. Instead, we would concentrate on this particular area. This area, when I say this area means this is only this sector, we would be concentrating this. We will be trying continuously to find out if enterprise opportunity lies somewhere here. And this is the total picture of sericulture, not only in India, you go to any country, this will be the total organic or uh, vertical uh, linkage among the sector. And I think moving forward, it can explain this, the people who are not very familiar with sericulture, they may find it a little difficult, but no matter, We'll move on. And again, when you talk about sustainable sericulture development or sustainable development in sericulture, I am in love with what is seen here. See, whatever development you talk about, it is a must that you align your development with the 2015 UN General Assembly agenda, which says that you have to have your development as per the sustainable development goals set by UN General Assembly. And the ultimate motto of this sustainable development goals is to leave no one behind. If you grow, you take everybody together and you grow together. There's no matter if you fight among yourself, but you have to grow together. So ultimate motto is to grow together, leaving no one behind. And out of the 17 agenda or out of the 17 sustainable development goals set by UN General Assembly in 2015, I am personally in love with six of them. And I would read out six of the most important sustainable development goals, which I am in love with. The first one is no poverty. No poverty is the most important sustainable development goal, which anybody can imagine. The first SDG is no poverty. The next one is zero hunger. I have nothing to say about this, zero hunger. Every one of us will be thriving very hard to eradicate hunger from this country or from the whole world. The next agenda or the next goal is decent work and economic growth. Move on to the next one, that is industry, innovation, and infrastructure. Without these, you will not be able to develop through your industry. The next goal is responsible consumption and production. The last one, but this is not the least one, 
this is sdg number 17 partnership to achieve the goal no goal can be achieved single handedly you have to work together let's move on to the next one it says that all the activities in the silk value chain have the potential to become an enterprise by itself seed production and chalky rearing has have assumed this status separately and already many entrepreneurs in the southern states are running the business successfully and highly profitable venture the technological and technical guidance and the support extended by central silk board and state agriculture research institutes coupled with extension supports by department of agriculture science has enabled these enterprises to be highly productive and profitable now in india the growth prospect we will be examining the growth prospect in india mulberry raw silk requirement is to grow 5% annually to reach our 42300 metric ton raw silk by the year 2030 to reach there we have to grow by at least a minimum of 5 growth of 5% annually demand for bivoltin silk would naturally grow much much higher rate the present business size when i say business size this is the total enterprise size of silkworm seed i mean mulberry silkworm seed is 235 crores if you break it up between bivoltin and cross breed that is 55 crores plus 180 crores by 2030 we believe the business of bivoltin seed to grow to 450 crores that's about 19% annual growth at a compounded annual growth of 19% if you grow you will reach 450 crores of total business size and the business of cross breed to grow to 360 crores if you grow at a 6% low and the total seed business by the time you reach 2030 it will be 810 crores and this may not be very much required for the people who know sericulture this is how the existing setup is in mulberry silkworm seed sector you have got parent seed production of course the parent seed production the parent seed production this side and the commercial silkworm seed production this side the interplay between these two sectors will be our business opportunity and in the parent production you have got the great great grandparent that is the nuclear so uh, nuclear seed this is the uh, this is what do you say mm, this is in the custody of the research and development institute and from there we get because all the p4 stations the great great grandparent is in the custody of the resource station and they give the breeder stock to the parent four station and that from that the p3 seed is given to the p3 station or p3 basic seed farm at the p3 basic seed farm the great great grand grandparent is produced that is also called the p2 seed and the p2 seed is given to the p2 basic seed farms there they generate the p2 p2 seed cocoons the p2 seed cocoons are given to our p1 seed production center that's a separate facility where p1 or parent seed is produced which is given to adopted seed rearers or our vendors who uh, gives us back the silkworm seed cocoons and from that uh, the commercial seed is produced and that is distributed to the farmers by central silk board dos and also private registered uh, producers and this is in a nutshell what's all about the seed sector yeah this slide shows you who does what in the seed production value chain i've already told you nsso takes care of the great 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 grandparent i am deliberately seeing for the, uh, saying this for the people outside csp because my colleagues in in the p4 station and the csr and the mysore would not agree with me if i say that nsso takes care of this this is actually Uh, a part looked after by my uh, the, my parent institute the csr and ti and the p4 station and then the seed comes to us the p3 seed p2 seed p1 and we are also the leader player in commercial silk hybrid silkworm seed and the state state agriculture uh, departments they also make parent seed but limited to cb and uh, hybrid seed in the case of again limited scale 
and private registered feed producers, they are the large chunk who produce hybrid seed or uh, crossbreed uh, seed and hybrid seed to an extent, to a very, very minimal extent. And private CRCs, I would say that these are the people, the entrepreneur group who runs Suriculture in India because they are flourishing, their business is flourishing now. And that is young stage silkworm rearing enterprise. We would come to this a little later. And this chart shows you the seed production, production role clarity, who actually makes what. I've already told you bivoltine seed. And this, this particular breakup is for bivoltine seed. And our requirement by 2020 is 12 crores. Now the current year, we have made a small modification to that. We have brought it down a little, but here we would like to say that this is in fact 12 crores. And moving forward by the year 2020, it will be 28 crores. I'm talking about bivoltine hybrid seed, commercial hybrid seed. And it will be difficult for any particular entity to produce the whole quantity of bivoltine hybrid seed. So we distribute the, distributed this among three different categories of people. We, we are here, the National Silkworm Seed Organization, we will not be able to produce going forward, even in the current year, more than 400 lakhs, that is four crores, because dwindling manpower, a limited scale of infrastructure, and we have stretched to the maximum extent, we can not, we can not produce more than 400 crores, means 400 lakhs. The remaining portion has to be shared between the state departments and the private producer. When I talk about the enterprise, here is the place, the enterprise opportunity lies. And this is only about crossbreed seed production and crossbreed seed production is under the complete control of private entrepreneurs and to an extent, the state departments, but they produce only minuscule quantity and almost 90% is produced by private registered producer. And this area is of Vivaltin, and this is only about crossbreed. Let's move on to the next one. And again, I ask you, where do the opportunities lie? Opportunities for what? For the enterprise. I would say the opportunity for the enterprise lies exactly here. The commercial silk seed production. If you see the forward integration, here you find the commercial chalky silk rearing, the forward in, uh, integration. When you make the backward integration, you here you find the parent seed coupon generation. These three verticals are the real enterprise opportunities in silk seed sector. Look at this. In the year 2020, the seed coupon generation alone is about 147 crores business. And if you move forward to 2030, this business would gradually grow to 250 crores. And if you talk about the commercial silk seed production, we have already mentioned that from 235 crores, it would move to 810 crores. Move on here, commercial chalky silk rearing. Currently, this is the business size of 1,237 crores. And this would substantially grow to reach a level of 3,500 crores of rupees by the year 2030. And when you want to start a business, what are the essentials? The essentials are land, labor, and capital. The essentials are land, labor, and capital. These are tangible essentials. I would say tangible essentials. There's a great amount of intang intangible essentials. Those are courage, conviction, and commitment. If these two things are coupled, or these two verticals are coupled, you are going to be a successful entrepreneur. Now move on. Silkworm seed production business. What are the things essentially required? You gather the basics of sericulture and seed production before venturing into this business. Do a market survey for demand assessment. So if you produce a material and if nobody is in need of that, your business will die down there itself. So before starting a business, do a market survey for demand assessment. Get necessary training, learn about possible government assistance. I know any given entrepreneur before starting an enterprise, he would walk into my room and ask that, what is that subsidy we get from the government? What are the financial assistance we get from the government? So it's also essential to understand what are those financial assistance 
in the offer from the side of the government and arrange the required space. As I told the land and labor, the land is a part of this only. If you do not have enough space to start your business, you cannot. So you have to arrange the required space and get all the regulatory clearance. You know very well in India or for that matter in any country to start a business, you need the government clearance, a lot of regulatory clearance. Find out what are those clearance required and just go for it. Get all the regulatory clearance and get statutory registrations as required. We would also talk about this a little later and ensure required working capital. If you do not have money in your kitty, you cannot think of any business. Of course, you can think. Nobody stops you from dreaming. You can continue dreaming. But if you want to really start the business, you should have working capital in your pocket and ensure continuous raw material supply. OK, you started a business, but you are not sure of the continuous flow of raw material. Your business is dead. So that's not possible. Make a clear understanding about the raw material supply and start at lower base and scale up. If you make a mistake of starting a business at a very high scale in the beginning itself, probably you are ought to lose. And if that is why Kachausep Chitilapalli started a business in the garage of his house with the two laborers and 50,000 rupees. Am I making any sense by talking this? Hope you follow. Maybe if your system is muted, you may not be able to respond. That's fine. Now, this is very important for any business. We talk about the economics. Usually, we calculate the economics at a big scale. We talk about the production of 5 lakh DFLs or 10 lakh DFLs or beyond that. But I thought I would approach this a little differently. I picked up one kilogram of cocoons. When I say cocoons, that is seed cocoons. If I calculate the expenditure to be incurred on processing one kilogram of cocoon, how could it be? I thought I would pay the maximum price for one kilogram of cocoon, and that's the rate of 800 rupees. But conditions prevail. There are conditions to buy a kilogram of cocoon by uh, paying 800 rupees. In the case of bivoltine, I mean, there are certain conditions stipulated. The cocoons you buy should be of 95% of pupation. It means the cocoons you bought should have at least 95% pupae live inside. In that case, you can decide. That is not the condition alone. Then that also, there's another condition, another two conditions. The total number of cocoons per kilogram, that should not be more than 700. And it also should not be less than 550. It means the cocoons what you buy should be 500 to 700 in number per kilogram. And the pupation should be 95%. If you want to pay 800, you can, you can also buy batches with 80% pupation, but the price you pay will be only 750 rupees. And there is one more condition. Your crop should be successful. And in that case, the yield per 100 BFLs that should be a minimum of 50 kg. So there are three conditions, and with three conditions are fulfilled, you can pay 800 rupees per kilogram of seed cocoons, you bought it. And you need to have the labor support to process this. We have made our calculation to process one kilogram of cocoon to end it in the form of silkworm seed, you may have to spend about 175 rupees on labor cost. This is on a little higher side, but still I thought we would subsume that extra cost. And you need one supervisory man to take care of the seed production. We apportioned 40 rupees for that. And for electricity and water, we have apportioned an amount of 20 rupees for one kg of seed cocoon uh, processing. And depreciation on the infrastructure and equipment you have already installed. You may put 20 rupees and apportion the cost for that. And if you want to preserve this, DFLs in cold storage facility. This is one problem with the bivoltine hybrid seed. You cannot straight away take your produce to the market once you produce that. That has to be compulsorily, artificially wintered. We call it artificial wintering, or you have to hibernate in cold storage facility. That period of cold storage preservation can range from three months to 10 months. You have got large lug room to decide when to save. But when to, see, uh, when to sell this. 
but you have to preserve this in the cold storage facility. Alternatively, you have a facility to break these, but we don't usually uh, appreciate that. On, on, on exigencies, you may do that, but we will go for the natural process of over, means artificial wintering the seed cocoons in artificial facilities. And for that, you may have to apportion some money. I thought uh, we would preserve the uh, seed produced for a period of 180 days. That comes about uh, six months. And I have apportioned 40 rupees as an expense for that. And you need to package it and sell. And if the package is beautiful, you have to spend more money. We need moderate packaging. And for that, if you process one kg of cocoons, you may end up in production of 200 uh, DFLs. And 200 DFLs have to be packed in 50 DFLs uh, boxes. And that will cost you about 20 rupees. I have put 30 rupees. And the total cost in the case of bivoltine seed production, it works out to be 1,125 rupees for processing one kilogram of cocoa. That's fair enough. But if you want to sell it, we sell 100 DFLs at a cost of, at a price of 700 rupees as of now. 700 rupees for 100 DFLs. So that means about 34 grams of seed. 34 grams of seed is 100 DFLs. And in 200, if you process uh, 800, means process one kilogram of cocoons, you get 200 DFLs. That will be packed as four packets of 50 DFLs. And if you sell it at uh, 350 rupees for 50 uh, DFLs box, you earn 1,400 rupees from that. And you, you can also sell the cut cocoon shell. And if you process one kilogram of cocoons, you will naturally end up in producing 200 grams of cut cocoon shell. Presently, we sell one kilogram of cut cocoon shell at 1,000 rupees. So you are uh, 200 grams of cut cocoon, you get 200 rupees approximately. So you gain a total of 1,600 rupees if you sell the DFLs produced out of one kilogram of cocoon and the cost economics or the benefit cost benefit ratio works out to be one is to 1.42. It means for every one rupee spent, you get one rupee 42 paise. So 42 paise is your profit, decent enough. Let us move on to crossbreed. For crossbreed seed production, you buy the, this is a general rate, not uh, when the demand is too high. When the demand is too high, your uh, price can escalate to a very high level. Normally, we buy one kilogram of crossbreed, means uh, pure Mysore seed, co seed cocoons at the rate of 350 rupees. And you also have, because 350 rupees, if you, buy, if you pay and buy one kilogram of pure Mysore seed cocoons, that will be about a thousand in number. You need half of that as bivoltine cocoons to cross that. So that will cost you about 500 rupees, 500 rupees. And again, I put a labor charge of 100, 100 rupees here because you don't need to uh, separate the female and uh, male uh, cocoons here. So labor is a little less here. You need a supervisory person with the 30 rupees apportionment and electricity, water, depreciation, preservation. Preservation is uh, zero. Crossbreed seed, you need not preserve naturally. You can, can just sell your seed the next day after it is ready. But if you want to store it, you can do it, of course, for 20 days, not beyond. And that we did, did not apportion any cost for that. And the packaging and processing, uh, literally none. You, because you make the most to lay your eggs on uh, the sheets and sheets do not cost you much. It's only about 17 paise or so, one sheet of um, uh, when you put the 40 mos or uh, 15 mos, whatever it is. So your cost works out to be 1,025 rupees when you process one kilogram of multivoltine cocoon with the help of equal number of male pupae from bivoltine. But the cost is this and your sale price the crossbreed DFLs are usually sold at 450 rupees per DFL. And here again, you can uh, sell your cut cocoon. And also you get a pierced cocoon in the case of multivoltine and cut cocoon. If you fully cut uh, uh, the bivoltine cocoons, you will earn here about 220 rupees. And the total earning will be 1,345 rupees. Here, the cost benefit ratio works out to be one is to 1.31. Little less than bivoltine, but here, uh, you can just go ahead because here the risk involved and the expertise involved is relatively less. 
so when you when you invest less expertise when you invest less risk the return will naturally be a little less and uh, just uh, let us look at the extrapolated figure uh, if you take different cases of uh, production capacity so in the case of biotin in a grainage facility or you say the silkworms production facility if you uh, make about 10 lakh biotin hybrid dfls a year or year or whatever time period if you produce 10 lakh your total cost of production works out to be 56 lakhs 25000 rupees and if you want to sell this at the rate of 7 rupees per dfl you will be earning 70 lakhs rupees and your ultimate net profit will be 13.75 lakhs but imagine if you want to sell it at 8 rupees a dfl naturally you will earn 80 lakhs and your uh, net gain will be a little more we at nsso right now we sell at 7 rupees per dfl in fact we have been selling at this rate for the last many years and you don't find any commodity in the world which is sold at the same rate for the last seven or eight years that happens only here and if you are a private producer you have no price cap you can decide your price based on the quality you sell and i believe going forward we may have to readjust the sale price we may move to eight rupees in the immediate future that may even move further going forward okay then accordingly you can just to see the uh, net profit you earn from here and if you make a 50 lakhs production in your production facility, your total cost will be 281 lakh. And you will be earning about 350 lakhs if you sell at 7 rupees. And if you sell at four, uh, 8 rupees, a DFL, you will be earning 4 crores or 400 lakh. And your earning will be the net profit will be 118.75 lakh. And in the case of my world crossbreed, as I sold, as I already told, your net earning will be a little less, but still it is very attractive. And now we are talking about seed cocoon generation. In the case of Bible team, the particulars of business size I'm saying. In 2020, I already told at the beginning that we have readjusted our target for the current year instead of instead of 10,000 metric ton, we made it 8,375 metric ton uh, Russell. And in 2030, it remains 20,000 metric ton. And for making 8,375 metric ton Russell, or producing rather, it's not made, it is produced. You need to produce 10 crores of bivoltine hybrid silicon seed, 10 crores. And in 2030, it will be 28 crores. And for producing 10 crore bivoltine hybrid silicon seed, you need to generate 5 lakh kilograms of bivoltin uh, silicon seed cocoon, 5 lakh kg for producing 10 crores of bivoltin seed. And if a person is holding two acres of mulberry, there are many, many people, many, many farmers who brushes about 1,250 DFLs per year, each crop 250 DFLs, and he uh, the yield remains about 70 kg. In that scale, if we calculate in the current year, at this level, we may need 300 people, but we may not get to 300 people all having two acres and at this level of brushing and uh, uh, getting this type, uh, level of yield. Okay, now if the, the average holding is four acre, then in that case, they will be brushing 5,000 DFLs per year and such farmers, we need only 150. When you talk about this level, I refuse, I will refuse to call them as farmer. I will start calling them as entrepreneurs. And going forward to the year 2030, and the requirement of produce seed producers will be 800 if the average holding is two acres, and that will come to 400 people if the average holding is 400 acres. Let us move on to the next one. In the case of crossbreed, here also I have mentioned the, the details. In the current year, our Russell target is 19,125 metric ton. Going forward to 2020, it will just remain at 22,300. And the DFLs required to produce this amount of silk, this amount of silk, that is huge 24 crores. 
and for producing 24 crores of crossbred DFL, you need 9.56 lakh kg of pure Mysore seed, seed cocoons or multi-voltage seed cocoons. You may also need some bivoltine cocoons. We will come to that. And to produce 9.56 lakh kilogram of multi-voltage seed cocoons, at an average holding of one acre per farmer, they will be rearing about 1,500 DFLs per annum, and they may get 40 kg of yield per, per 100 DFLs. In that case, we may need 1,600 farmers, okay? And by 2030, we may need 2,000 farmers. And if the average land holding is considered at two acres, then their average brushing or average rearing per year will be 3,000 DFLs. Again, the yield is kept at 40 kg, and we may need 800 entrepreneurs, I would say, 800 entrepreneurs. And in 2030, that will be about 10,000 entrepreneurs. And uh, seed cocoon by voltage. See, along with uh, multi voltage seed cocoons, you will not be able to produce uh, crossbreed uh, silicone seed. You need by voltage also. And in that case, we need 7.35 lakh kg of by voltage seed cocoons in 2020. And 2030, it will be 9.24 lakh kg. And here, at an average holding of one acre, I would say uh, two acres, that will be 420 people. And four acres, it will be 2,201 uh, farmers. There's a reason why I say it is only one acre or two acre. In the case of multi voltine seed cocoon, as all of you know, multi voltine seed cocoons cannot be reared across India or across sericulture belt, if you like. Government of Karnataka and Government of India notified specific seed areas and multi voltage seed cocoons can be generated only in notified seed areas. And the peculiarity of notified seed area is that the average land holding of the people, of the farmers is relatively low. So you may not get these type of land holding in the seed area. You may get here and there one or two, but not across the board. And so the, you may be finding a little difficult to find entrepreneurs in the case of multi voltage seed cocoons. And now, look at the case study of Mr. Jijo and three of his friends. I find very interested to, to quote this case. Mr. Jijo came from uh, Kerala. He was, he, he's a qualified electrical engineer. He left his place in, uh, in, in Attapadi near Palakkad and moved on to uh, close to Mysore. He set up a facility there with the 16 acres of mulberry. And he built a rearing house of 4,840 square feet area with 220 feet of length and 20 feet, 22 feet breadth. And he can brush 1,500 DFLs per batch. And he easily harvests about 1,000 kg cocoons per batch. You can just make a calculation what will be, he will be his monthly earn. Okay, this is the mulberry garden of Mr. Jejo. And I just make it as a case study and I'll tell all the budding entrepreneurs, you, if you want to start this as an enterprise, just to get the required exposure through the formal or informal training, you can also have peer guidance and establish mulberry garden of high yielding varieties. Look at this, this is V1. And now construct the rearing house of the required capacity. Here is the long rearing house. This is only half size. This is only half the size. Beyond that, another half. This is too long a rearing house and install the appliances and equipment. And start with the rearing hybrid and gain experience. We don't ask people, if you are a new rarer, we don't ask people to straight away to go to rare by voltage pure seed. Instead, gain experience by doing the hybrid seed and do a market survey as, a, as always for demand in seed, seed cocoons, or continue on continuous basis, get all the regulatory clearances, get statutory registrations, ensure required working capital. Without that, you cannot do anything. Then ensure continuous access to the parent seed because to do seed rearing, you need to have continuous access to the parent seed. The parent seed is usually given by the commercial silkworm seed production center. Only if they mind, you will get the P1 seed. If they say that, no, we won't give you, you will not get this. 
In such case, you may have to depend again on hybrid seed. So if you have established a business linkage with a commercial silkworm seed production center, you can ensure free means continuous supply of P1 seed. And again, concentrate on quality. And this is again the rearing facility of Mr. Jijo. This is the rearing in progress. It's a long facility, as I told. This is long shelf rearing. You can see one, two, three, four, five, six tires of rearing shelf. And this is after one of the harvest. This is the cocoons are spread here. You can also see the cocoons spread on the other side. This is a big facility. And the economics of seed rearing. Now we are actually speaking the forward integration from the level of seed production. No, backward integration, the seed cocoon generation. After this, we will go to the forward integration. See, I have calculated here the economics for, uh, for doing one acre mulberry and the initial investment on mulberry cultivation. If you want to establish a mulberry garden in one acre and want to pursue seed rare, then your initial investment on mulberry cultivation will be around 58,000 some odd rupees. And the initial investment on rearing building, that will be about, uh, so this is only an apportioned cost, about uh, 77,500 rupees if you calculate the depreciation on, a, on, on an apportioned basis. And initial investment on rearing equipment, that will be about uh, 13,510 rupees. And the recurring expenditure on mulberry garden, that will work out about 1,45,953. You have to spend a lot of money on that, on maintaining your mulberry garden. You have to spend on labor and a lot of other things. And you have to uh, make your own input to the uh, rearing, cost on rearing. That works out to be 32,843. And the labor cost on rearing, that works out to be 1,23,200 rupees. And in all, your cost on uh, one acre mulberry plus that's rearing, that will be 4,51,661 rupees. And by total earning, it could be about 7 lakhs rupees. And that can happen only if your rearing capacity is 1,250 1, DFLs per annum per 1 lakh. And in each crop, you will be doing about 250 DFLs. And, uh, and the number of crops in natural case will be 5. But if you break this one acre into two and do continuous rearing or an alternative raise, that will be 10 crop. And uh, we expect at least 70 kilogram uh, yield per each 100 DFLs. And your cost, cost benefit ratio works out here the one to as one is to 1.55. It means for every one rupee spent, you get 55, uh, uh, 55 rupees extra. As a thumb rule, when I talk to the entrepreneurs in silkworm seed generation, seed cocoon generation, what they say me that if I get one rupee out of this business, I would say 35 to 40 rupees is my profit. Decent, really decent. And now let's move on to the next vertical, that is the forward integration. If you want to start a commercial chalky rearing enterprise, you need to gather the basics of sericulture and uh, seed production. And again, you have to do a market survey for demand assessment, get necessary training, learn about possible government assistance as I have also always been maintaining, arrange the required space, get all the regulatory clearance, get statutory registrations as required here, ensure required working capital, I go on repeating this, working capital is the most important input in starting any enterprise and ensure continuous raw material supply. What is here the raw material? The raw material here is the silicone seed. If any commercial silicone seed producer would be happy if you are ready to buy the silicone seed from him because he is looking for a buyer. So if you can make a business tie up with any of the leading commercial silicone seed producer, you can ensure continuous supply of raw materials and start again here at a lower base and scale up gradually. And this is in the gist of the complete module of the chalky rearing. The chalky rearing module is this, these are the highlights. This is going to be a valuable, viable enterprise and this will be a scalable enterprise provided you see, take care of all the remaining, all the other verticals. Chalky rearing lasts only for seven to eight days. When you talk about a business, 
you are dealing with the, your, your produce or your material only for seven to eight days, your risk is concentrated onto that seven to eight days. If you take care, you succeed. Or if you do not take care, you fail miserably there. And this is conducted in commercial scale in dedicated facility. You cannot simply start in any way. You have to create a facility which is dedicated and you can, because uh, that has to be all the required facilities. And you have to do this in the dedicated facility and it should have controlled temperature and relative humidity. And you need to feed succulent and nutritious tender mulberry leaf and that will result in robust and disease tolerant silkworm in the later age. And that can also ensure consistent crop success in the later time. And if all these things are taken care of, you are ending up in a viable enterprise and that's also a scalable business. That's what I say, start at the lower base and go on making your base bigger going forward. And these are the essential symbols. You have to have a separate irrigated mulberry garden, ideally with the, the improved varieties. I would go with the V1 or G2 and separate rearing house with essential rearing equipment. Optimum temperature need to be 27 to 28 degree in the rearing house. You need to maintain good relative humidity at 85 to 90%. It has to be foolproof disinfection of appliances and premises. Skilled manpower with experience in chalky rearing. Procurement of silicone mix from registered silicone seed producer only. If you are registered chalky rarer, you have to make sure that you source your hybrid silicone seed only from a registered silicone seed producer. And chalky red worms supply ideally to 80 to 100 farmers nearby. And your catchment mulberry gardens will be about 120 to 150 acres if you are starting the chalky business in a small scale. And this is the enterprise package. 32 crop cycles per year by a chalky rearing center with a minimum of two acres mulberry garden. The total chalky rearing a year just reaches 1.6 lakh DFLs a year. The crop every 10 days, I told the crop every 10 days, the 10 days is for about 78 days of chalky rearing and uh, two to three days for our cleaning and disinfection. And a crop every 10 days, a gap of three days for cleaning and disinfection as I already told. Incubation and development synchronization in preparation of brushing. When you want to brush it on a single day, you need to take care of incubation and development synchronization. We do it by a process called black boxing. And this is the economics of chakurating for two acres of mulberry. The initial establishment and chakurating mulberry production cost is 3,33,000. Apportioned cost for mulberry garden establishment, 7,900 rupees. Total cost of production, 3,40,000. Okay, you, you can talk about all this. And if the chocolate larvae, if you're selling at a rate of 2,500 rupees per 100 DFLs, you will be earning 40 lakhs rupees. And your cost of production will be 20 lakhs, 38,000 30, rupees. And you will be making a neat earning of 15 lakh, 61,200 rupees from two acres chalky mulberry garden and rearing of 32 cycles and 1,60,000 DFLs. And here, the cost benefit ratio works out to be one is to 1.64. Mind you, one is to 1.64 only if you are selling your chalky larvae at 2,500 rupees per 100 DFL. There are successful entrepreneurs nearby who sell it between, at the rate between 3,000 to 3,500 rupees or even at the rate of 3,800 rupees when demand spikes, spikes up. Please excuse me for, for a second, my battery is getting low. One second. I'm done. Yeah, we'll move to the next slide. And here, there are a large number of uh, 
CRCs with the monthly brushing of two to three lakhs DFL, large number, a number in a plenty. Ones with the annual brushing of 30 to 40 lakhs DFLs are quite few. They are big facility. In two acres, the total expenses, as I already mentioned, that is the fixed and recurring cost, the total will be about 24.5 lakhs. And revenue, 15 point, total net revenue could be 15.5 lakhs. And there are entrepreneurs who grew exponentially. I would just take you to, to a very, very successful entrepreneur. Uh, with his permission, I would say, because this was uh, uh, presented somewhere in Delhi for a special purpose. Uh, the, we'll just, let's, uh, let us just listen to uh, Mr. Jagadish of Kiran Giri CRC if I'm able to play the video. Otherwise, I may need your help. Is the video played? Uh, no, sir, not yet. Not yet? Okay, let me just see. Now? Uh, now it's playing, sir. Okay, okay. okay. Let me just listen to Jagadish. What? Uh, uh, not be, uh, in fact, I'll go. I'll go. Right just let, uh, uh, let us see. Yes, sir, please, sir. A postgraduate in sericulture made a humble beginning by establishing Kiran Gere Chaki Rearing Center in the year 1994 to supply healthy and robust young state silkworms to a handful of farmers in his native village. The center has grown manifold over the years with the support of central and state schemes and presently it caters to the needs of about 25,000 farmers in southern India. The center supplies chaki reared worms of about 30 lakh DFLs a month. The CRC has been instrumental in improving the cocoon yield from 30 kg per 100 DFLs to the level of 70 kg per 100 DFLs in its command area through supply of healthy and robust young silkworm. Besides supply of chaki larvae, it has provided job opportunity to about 1,000 persons, both in its center and at franchisee level. With annual turnover of about 34 crores, it has registered a net profit of 3 crores. Acknowledging the two and a half decades of the services of Mr. Chakneesh, the present award is conferred to him. Thank you. Are you in the slide now? Yes, the slide sir. is okay. No, I'll not take much time, Gildesh. You are seeing the slide now? Yes, yeah, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. No, no problem. Okay, sir. Yeah, yeah. Just moving ahead. It's not take much time. Now, the advantage is the proper incubation of eggs leads to a good and the uniform hatching. Chances of contamination and spread of disease is very less. Uniformly grown and healthy silicon larvae. Cost of production is less. And returns are more due to simple and effective management. Crop stability and increased cocoon yield enables to increase the number of cocoon, uh, number of crop cycles and frequent cash flow. This is very important. And the impact of Chucky concept, the bivalent seed consumption grew at a phenomenal con compounded annual growth rate of 25% during the past five years. The average bivalent cocoon productivity improved from 55 kg per 100 DFLs to almost 70 kg. The bivalent rosal production grew at an annual rate of 15%. The bivalent farmers departed from the practice of directly buying the seed from the seed production centers, crop losses due to poor young in start, now almost a thing of the past. And the enabling environment, what is now created, the ease of establishment and, and doing the business. Registration under Seed Act is mandatory. Matriculation and training are prerequisites for seed production and chalky rearing business. Bound by the quality stipulations, self-certification, disease freeness and quantity stipulated. Quarterly production returns to the registration authority, free access to the inspection system and product, minimal, mi minimum annual target as a measure of financial stability. This is the total number of registrations by the, re the registration authority did during the last five or six, seven years. The total number of registration is 27,936. I'll just to give you a break up. And that works out to be about uh, this, look at this, 27,936 total registration, about 19,000 is from Mulberry, 
6,457 from Chasser, 1,500 from Buga, and a very small level at Eri. And if you take the mulberry sector alone, where the seed register, seed producers, about 8,600, 860. Any problem? No, sir, no. Okay. Okay. The chalky rare is about 1,248. And the seed rare is 16,871. Now, the problem here is the total number of registration, as I say, is 27,936. And all the people, they are not live now. In the sense, they are they, after five years of registration, they have to renew their registration. All the people did not do that. See, there are 3,275 seed producers due for renewal. Only 511 renewed. But some of them, have not reached the five years, so they are still live. Only this much people are valid now. The registration is valid only for this many people. Similarly, in the mulberry sector, all the people who have entered with the big bandwagon are now not in the same tempo. Only uh, maybe a few people have simply withered away. And uh, look at this, the initiatives for upscaling the biotin seed production by private players. There are a little bit of constraints for the new players, dearth of expertise of higher order, mental block and fear of failure. If someone wants to take up Bible in sericulture, they have a fear of failure and mental block. Responsibility of shouldering the financial loss owing to inventory loss and lack of support from rank and file, high standards and brand recall of National Silicon Seed Organization, non-uniformity in financial assistance by different state governments, very important point, because some people feel that the assistance given in the state of Karnataka, that is disproportionate, and that is not available in the state of Andhra Pradesh and many other states. That sort of a disbalance still prevails. And we from uh, NSSO, we take some steps to de-bottleneck such problems. We invite the private blocks and state players to give handholding and necessary skills and uh, training, and training in hard and soft skills, hand-holding in the initial phase, and we also support them for infrastructure and biovoltaic seed preservation. And now the hallmark of seed sector is brand building based on quality and performance. See, in silicone seed sector, if you do not make a brand of yourself, you will not be able to succeed and high level of competition and no entry barriers. Anybody who wants, they can enter here, no entry barriers, but once you enter, you will feel the taste of high competition. But there's an advantage. When you need to compete with many people, your quality will be escalated. Naturally, your quality will go up and commitment and conviction you must due to performance pressure and peer comparison. Constant monitoring and feedback by the user and customer. If you are user, if you are a user, you can give the constant feedback to your, uh, your, your seller and vice versa. And strong customer loyalty, no frequent migration. If one person wants to buy the chocolate at Larve from Kirangere Jagdeer, it is not easy for him to change to another seller because that sort of a strong customer bond and loyalty remains here. And no price barrier, premium pricing based on customer demand. If your, quant if your produce is of high demand, you can price it accordingly for premium pricing can be done for premium quality. And raw material pricing, again, linked to stipulated quality. I told in the beginning itself, you will not be paying everybody 800 rupees per kilogram of cocoa. That is depending on the quality stipulated and high degree of trust and loyalty among the involved players. All the players in silicon seed sector, this high, th th this intimate bond among people, and this is the strength by which the industry grows. Strong linear linkage among the basic seed suppliers, seed cocoon producers, seed producers, and chalky rarers, and a vendor design in place, built on quality policy with the mutually agreed freedom and reject and to reject below par materials. And NSSO also stands as an enabler. We ensure seamless supply of parent seed subject to satisfactory level of conversion. If you're not, not able to convert that into seed cocoons, then we may think twice before giving the next batch. 
but naturally you we feel that we can ensure seamless supply of parent seed initial hand holding in generating seed cocoons extension of expertise for establishing the facilities occasional hands on training in diverse fields of hybrid seed production dissemination of production techniques among the players on a continuous basis facilities for long term preservation of hybrid seed for all the players by offering healthy competition no focus deviation from the declared quality standards and this is i am just reaching towards the end it's only one of the slides now see for any enterprise to succeed this is exactly the prescription for success see if you are into an enterprise if you have not prepared for continual improvement you are gone i would say you are dead or enterprise is dead and that's not alone you need to have a standard operating procedure you need to have continual improvement you need to have standard operating procedure and what is that if you do not have managed sub management support again you are gone coupled with quality policy and quality strategy you have to have a quality policy in place in your production facility and also you should have a quality strategy and if you do not have an ethics a business ethics you are sure to fail mr pc mustafa he could have made his business by this time to 1200 crores if he continued the high profit business he decided on one fine day that against the ethics he started marketing and produce so he thought he would not continue that's the beauty of business ethics so you have to have business ethics uh, to, for your enterprise to flourish and succeed you need to provide training to the people uh, involved and also to yourself and always make sure of quality assurance and quality control and now <laughs> closing note enterprise opportunities are aplenty around you pick it or pick the right one yes, go for it run it and grow it an enterprise you need to grow continuously and you have to run it continuously take the challenge head on and if you are not prepared to take the challenge head on you are gone success is yours make sure the enterprise is sustainable it will bring smile not only on your face but your next generations as well that's all from me thank you very much for listening this long thank you all anand anand uh, thank you very much sir dr k n sashindran nayar sir for your uh, a useful uh, interesting uh, valuable uh, information uh, that you uh, scattered on the uh, faces of the young uh, the researchers uh students for the benefit of uh, the scholars and also for the inter industry point of view uh thank you very much uh, nayar sir uh, now i request uh, all the uh, the participant delegates to impose any questions queries clarifications uh, please interact the scientist is waiting for your uh, uh, the interaction i see many of our uh, successful entrepreneurs keshavmurthy is sitting there keshavmurthy hello yeah lot of other people ah uh, siddhi kisa yes sir uh, uh, a very good presentation and very good presentation really uh, you have shown the benefit of uh, in biotin seed production 1 is to 1.4 but uh, you have not shown the initial cost of raising of the building and infrastructure uh that is not here Everything and uh, number 2 and number 2 either I, it has to be provided by I, the uh, csb to the uh, entrepreneurs or he has to raise his own infrastructure because raising the own infrastructures and all the other equipments it, it will is a huge expenditure uh, i think csb has to provide uh, i think you have to uh, you understand my point of view csb uh, because you have not shown the expenditure on the uh, uh, raising the infrastructures and also the equipments you okay. have shown the cost of the uh, seed cocoons and this labor and everything and the ratio come 1 is to 1.42 but you have not shown the uh, expenditure of the private producer on the infrastructure 
no i have only taken the apportioned cost of depreciation cost see for first year first okay. year you may not be able to get uh, even for, uh, when you establish the silkworm seed okay. production center, for you okay. to reach the break even i would have uh, to break even at the same time okay, okay. first year when you produce you uh, uh, ending up at the profit because they are lunch time they're selling their lunch time See, you are getting a profit hmm. in the first year of your production to reach the break even. Yes. Yes. No, no, no. Oh, no, no. Oh, no. Oh, okay. Okay, Dr. Dr. Nair. Yes, sir. Hello. No. Yeah. Hey. Yes, sir. Now the economics is always hmm. open for discussion. If you need yeah. Twenty-five. That's it. This calculation is based on the hmm. examples of many of producers. and on the from the side so of the entrepreneur naturally they will not be very happy to highlight it this way and mm. i am actually in support of them but uh, to to cash to flow it will be a fallacy to believe that the first year of okay uh obo bro non madko mani ivaga yeah avudhi problem adhi okay okay correct mute okay open mark okay Sir, Nair sir, please unmute sir. Nair sir, yeah. please. See, not only in the case of seed producer, even in the case of a farmer who established a mulberry garden and also a rearing facility, I spoke with him personally. Even for him to reach the break even, he has to wait for four years. So imagine in the the case of the seed producer, it will not be proper on my part to believe that the first year itself he ends up in profit. No, absolutely not. To reach the profit, why? To reach the break even itself, he may have to wait for the fourth or fifth year. There, at the fourth or fifth year, when we start calculating one kg uh, processing, then where you are taking the apportioned cost, that amount comes to less. when you calculate the for the production of 5 lakhs or 10 lakhs then naturally the the, the scale is different yeah shall we sir sir uh, yeah yeah uh, angri angri sir yeah uh sachinda nai this yeah. is manjuna this is me yeah 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 please please <laughs> sir uh, angri sir also is raising hand i have to okay. just come okay okay we'll go one by one please. don't worry we'll go one by one don't worry Yeah. Now my question is that especially we are happy that you have delivered a new good uh, presentation, Thank which you. is more beneficial to our student as well as other. Most importantly, our yes, students please. are the emerging entrepreneurs. Do yeah, you agree sir. with me or not? Yeah, our students are emerging entrepreneurs. Yeah, 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 yeah. I understand. I accept that. Yeah, and it okay. is quite useful to our students. Yeah. And now my point is that of course it is a good uh, informations for our students to, to make a mind. yeah in such case whatever the, cal the calculations in terms of economics you have provided is really quite meaningful the students can also look into that to after msc they can take up yeah. because most of the msc students always want of job rather than entrepreneur and uh, i consider your lecture will be a more motivating thank you very much yeah and another question is yeah, please uh so, i have two so, questions so, not many so, manjuna i thought uh, i thought you made a statement i agree with your statement completely absolutely no doubt now i just wanted to one say one point see yeah. after this one hour lecture what i thought out of this 147 odd people who who were listening to me one out of this 147 after 5 years down the line if i can find one successful entrepreneur from silkworm seed production sector i thought this talk has served its purpose so the, the, i am i am in the line of the same question now yeah what is your message based on your uh, presentation to our student and in what way you can able to support our students to emerge as an entrepreneur professor manjunath i would say one thing gone are the days where people wait for the white collar job forget about the white collar not even blue collar job now you have got the strength of knowledge after completing your msc you have got the strength of knowledge that will create a ground to understand more see a lay person coming into the field understanding everything afresh he may take his own time but with the great background background of a post graduation in msc a post graduation yep. in sericulture it will create a big ground to understand the things relatively more easily 
And Thank you. It will be again a fallacy to believe that listening to one lecture, somebody would end up in a business. Probably not. But instead, I would say uh -huh. interact with many peers or many fellow entrepreneurs and make up his mind. Maybe out of hundred discussion, he would finally decide that this is not my cup of tea, and he will move away. Okay. So, but if this, uh, can, if this can ignite, if this can yes. ignite the mind of one person uh, to start and to set up the business, run it, and go for it for a long time, so that he will be able to provide employment opportunity to a handful of people around. Then, we need to ignite a person. Yeah. Undoubtedly, with one point, but not many points. Yeah. Like one step, start with the many for the many steps, Sir. right? Uh, what do you, what are the supports you could able to extend to our students to uh, you know facilitate them or support them or we can able to encourage them? If you are if you are seeking about the financial support, I would say I will not be able to commit anything right now because we have got some schemes under yeah, Silk Samagra. Under Silk Samagra, some amount is apportioned or earmarked. And that yeah. again need to be shared among Central Silk Board, State Departments, and the entrepreneur himself. And the okay. share from Central Silk Board would be 50%. The share of State uh, Department will be 25%. And another 25% by, uh, by the person himself. But waiting on the, waiting for the benefit, financial benefit from the government side, I may not think, I do not think that's the right idea of going into business. You may have to create uh, the working capital by I mean, any, any entrepreneur. Naturally, there will be support. But from Good. the Central Silk Board or National Silk Home Seed Organization, for any technical support, for any Good. technical support, for any guidance, we are always available. Yeah. My one request toward this end, especially I come across some critical situation when one of my MSc students applied for Chakirayan Center. The center, though he has a MSc sericulture, but it is refused. And then, they, uh, 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 then he has to go for some kind of training program for chakirering. Of course, I don't uh, deny for going for a you know, training program, but denying for MSc sericulture degree or any of the sericulture who are graduated with the sericulture, I think I, my suggestion to a center silk board, since you are there, please make it in mind. Try to consider our MSc Sericulture students wherever is possible for this type of entrepreneurship. Then it could be a good support to us. I agree. We yeah. have been trying this for quite a long time. Uh, this is a government of India decision. They thought that to start a business, you want to, if you want to become an entrepreneur, a three months training, a certificate training, uh, it's essential. Uh, we thought maybe for chalky rearing, a training of two weeks would be enough. But this is a government policy. We would again try to reach them. If possible, we will cut it short. We have yeah, no because, problem. Yeah, if, say, if, you say the government policy, if you say the government policies, we are also comes under the government. We are also giving the training to our students. Yeah, ultimately, <laughs> yeah, ultimately. Now, I will, Professor Manjunath, I would tell one thing. Yeah. Uh, we have got cases where persons served in Central Silk Board for 35 years and he had to undergo training. He was earlier a trainer. Even a trainer had to undergo a training for only for, for a for a uh, legal requirement. So yep. that's the case as of now. But we will continue trying. We yeah, please continue keep trying. mind. Anyway, I'll uh, let us go for another uh, you know the other people who can ask you a question. Please. Thank Dr. you. Andri, sir. Yeah. sir, you are not heard, sir. You are not heard. Anybody? Anybody? Uh, uh, Dr. Nair, uh, can yes, you hear me? Yeah, sure, sir. Yes. Uh, uh, let me first of all compliment you for an excellent presentation. Thank Very you. explicit explanation of the enterprise uh, opportunities available in the seed sector. Uh, nevertheless, I have one or two suggestions to you. Before I go to that, let me answer the question raised by Dr. Manjunath, one of the faculty members, about the government mm -hmm. support. You know, to augment the production of biota and hybrid layings in the country, Government has been extending both the technical and financial support to the enter enterprising entrepreneurs. Number one, technical support, the training as already explained by Dr. Nair. And secondly, the most basic requirement of the P1 layings required for raising the parent set cocoons are supplied by NSSO. They also help the 
seed farmers in raising the quality and dependable parent seed cocoons and in between the quality control in the form of you know the seed act uh, monitoring and all those things so coming to the financial assistance under the silk samagra scheme implemented by central seed board here uh, financial assistance is available to the existing entrepreneurs and also to the new entrepreneurs they give you know financial support for upgrading the infrastructure facilities and uh, for creating the infrastructure facilities like the cold storage plants and also they have made a provision for giving the working capital this is one time assistance to the extent of about 18 lakh rupees but for this all these incentives will be channelized through the department respective department of the state governments central silk board will not divert directly give it to the uh, uh, entrepreneurs they have to approach the state government say for example department of sericulture government of karnataka department of sericulture andhra pradesh or maharashtra whatever by case by case and these people have to approach central silk board through the respective state governments and central silk board has got its own criteria to consider for extending this financial assistance once they are convinced this financial assistance will be extended to the entrepreneurs okay coming to the second thing it is not that easy to start a bio ten granish because of the fact that the initial investment for creating the infrastructure itself is to the tune of almost 93 lakhs and the working capital required is to produce about 30 lakhs of laings to the tune of you know 25 to 30 lakhs and the committed expenditures like you know the labor the electricity transportation and all those things the cost of production what he has uh, you know presented is uh, probably based on his experience in nsso when we consider this you know the production of biovoltaics there are two angles of looking at it one the government looks at it as a service activity and the private people look at it as a professional activity the government you know extends a lot of you know hidden subsidies although we say that you know we are selling the lanes at 700 rupees there is definitely a hidden subsidy of not less than 100 to 150 rupees a private person cannot afford to sell these lanes at the rate of 700 rupees in case if he sells it for every one laying he will be incurring a loss of 1 rupee 50 paise if he produces 30 lakhs of lanes his loss will be to the extent of 45 lakhs okay dr nayar the, these things you know require some more discussions i have a suggestion here uh, dr siddiqui also pointed out the creation of infrastructure is very important the most important basic facility required for the production of biotin lanes is a building the private entrepreneur who is already having a building can consider the depreciation on the cost of the building or a private entrepreneur who hires a building for conducting uh, for taking up the car production of these lanes his rent also has to be included in the fixed cost coming to the variable cost probably you may have to consider the annual maintenance cost of the cold storages the production loss and also the risk factor i'm only restricting my uh, discussion about the biovoltaic production because when you uh, hibernate the quantity of you know 30 lakhs of lanes after you release it in the form of winnowing or eliminating the unfit eggs or the uh, eggs which are not good for uh, you know the disposal there will be a loss of at least 5% that also has to be considered here and the second thing you know you have considered the average yield of eggs at 68 grams average eggs in the beginning may not go up to that you said you know four four boxes for every 1 kg of cocoons 70 grams that works out to almost 68 grams Yeah, uh, it is better to take 65 grams or 60 grams this is one thing and you have rightly pointed out the present volume of this industry from 235 crores will go up to 810 crores really you know this is going to happen i am little more optimistic considering the inflation rate this 800 will definitely get accelerated to 1000 crores and this holds the opportunity lot of opportunity for the young entrepreneurs considering the fact that you know our present production is to the tune of about 6 crores the biotin requirement by the end of 2030 will go to the tune of 28 crores almost five times yes. and all the government organizations they have got their own limitations and they can never produce more than 10 lakhs altogether do you agree dr nair yeah, including yeah, the state the government and sso and the 18 crores of you know the balance links have to be definitely produced by the private entrepreneurs we require at least 100 private establishment to take up this you, you know herculean task and here you know all young entrepreneurs including the msc pausox and all those things they can really look forward for establish a grain niche on their own 
of course seeking there are many many ways you know getting uh, assistance from the government that can be discussed uh, later on and secondly you know i suggest you to have revisit your calculations of the requirement of the seed farmers seed farmers required for uh, you know for 28 crores our requirement of seed farmers will be more than you know 3500 seed farmers uh, I, I do not i am not able to recollect how much you said maybe 700 or 800 probably it is almost uh, you know five times more so now the thing is that i have put the acreage requirement is about the four acres all the farmers will not thanks even in that case even in that case it will be 2000 okay anyway you, you can just revisit uh, and uh, check it that is one uh, thing Dr. and Dr. the third one is uh, uh, it will be beneficial to the students as you said you please include the assistance available from the different uh, sources it state is, government is, as well as the csp silk, silk yeah. thank you very much i once again congratulate you for a very good presentation dr nayar Dr. Dr. Rangi, thank you for your yeah. yeah. about the silk summer. Uh, the, the, your voice will be, your word will be taken care by the CSB. Because usually the entrepreneurs ask this. All this silk summer graduates have with me. Dr. Nair. Okay. Ah, sir. Basura, sir. Dr. Nair. Ah, yes, sir. Please. Basura, sir. Yeah. Dr. Nair. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Try Nair. to limit the yeah. number of questions ah. uh, rather than a, a long, lengthy discussion. Dr. Dr. Nair. Sir. Uh, please, sir, Basra, sir. Uh, 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 Dr. Nair, very good presentation with clarity. And you have achieved, you know, almost all uh, egg production system in the NSS organization, particularly the seed cocoon policy. Some audio problem. Then uh, seed cocoon need egg recovery, egg index, egg production efficiency, not flexibility in NSSO. In turn, it should go to private internship. You know, not to sentence. If you are reaching maximum. Why, sir? Yeah. What is your future focus? Our focus is not to improve further the productivity. Productivity uh -huh. we have already reached. If we are able to sustain. The stability, st sustainability and stability. Mm. If only the productivity need to be sustained. If we can, as Dr. Angadi said, if we can re means maintain a state of 65 grams per uh, one kg of cocoons, that it, itself would suffice because we are almost, uh, this is a world beating average. 65 grams per one kg of cocoons is a world beating average. If no, for only sustain that. Private entrepreneurship, what is your suggestion in one or two sentences for stability? Private entrepreneurship. Uh, this is all about the, what is that we have discussed because now be NHS my, job, NHS my, job is, sir, my job i thought it is only to make them understand opportunity lies here they will go and explore okay. they will find out okay. based on one lecture i would i would say that nobody would enter into a business but this would okay. be only a starting point they can always okay. walk up to a person by name dr angadi they will all, they can always walk up to a person by name dr hk basavaraja lot of they, you, you are a wealth of knowledge and this no, no. Is starting point from where they can take their uh, journey forward that is the only thing uh, it will be really a fallacy to believe that this would be the starting point of many people entering to the business absolutely not so anyhow once again i congratulate you for nice presentation with clarity thank you thank you, thank you so much sir. thank you so much okay uh Next, any participants uh, interested to impose yeah, yeah, yeah. the uh, clarifications, questions? Yeah. Make it short. Please, make it short. Please do, not, please do not instigate people to ask a question. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, yeah. You have taken much of time, sir. No, you are requested to answer everybody. <laughs> yeah, sure, I, I'm here. And I'm sorry uh, if uh, I have taken more time. Uh, I, 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 I am sure. I am sure the Dr. Nair oh, is more okay. capable Hello. to answer all the questions, Hello. but uh, the time scarcity. Uh, Dimanja, sir, please. Hello. Good afternoon, Dr. Nair and everybody. Anjana, sir. Hello. Am I audible? Yeah, very good, sir. Please. How are you, go on, go on, How are you Dr. Nair? How are you? I'm very good, sir. I'm doing very good. <laughs> and uh, I have all the compliments uh, for your uh, beautiful presentation with a lot of useful information. I am sure that uh, your lecture has uh, uh, sown a seed of uh, 
some yeah. really uh, uh, that uh, our people can really think of uh, taking up uh, that is uh, music to my ear that is music to my ear uh, <laughs> uh, this uh, uh, they can take up uh, this uh, uh, sitcom seed production and uh, the grenage uh, establishment all these things as uh, uh, wonderful enter entrepreneurial uh, programs uh, definitely but uh, as you say that uh, it is not uh, uh right on anybody's part to think of uh, commencing a program like this uh, with one uh, uh igniting uh, uh, program like this uh, igniting the minds or igniting the thinking of our people uh definitely they need to have a lot of interaction with uh, the experts and also the people who have been uh, in this area uh, and uh, sharing their experiences uh, would be quite ideal for our students uh, instead of suddenly jumping on uh, to uh, commencing a program like this otherwise uh, uh, i am immensely pleased uh, uh, by your uh, beautiful presentation with lot of useful information and you have made it very 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 lively uh, and uh, uh, i am once again uh, uh, taking this opportunity to uh, congratulate you uh, and uh, it's indeed a great occasion for me to be here and uh, uh, seeing you presenting uh, uh, a nice uh, account on this particular aspect thank you thank you thank you dr nair thank you uh, dr sanappa uh, dr jagdish kumar dadar uh, professor manjunath all the people uh, from the department of agriculture uh, for uh, providing me this opportunity because any whenever conduct a webinar for that they keep me informed about uh, these things so i am immensely uh, thankful to all of them thank you dr nair thank you sir thank you sir i also see mr krishna he will not have any answer, any any question to ask me because we have been uh, on regular uh, contact i have a, uh, please to see any, any students no uh, krishna yeah Good afternoon, sir. Uh, you have given a very nice presentation, sir. And uh, wherever uh, I see the project reports, the cost-benefit ratio you just uh, mentioned one is to one point five or one point four eight like that. Uh, but uh, you never take any contingencies. Uh, suppose uh, if I produce a certain quantity now, by what in is uh, I have to keep it uh, for uh, in minimum four month schedule. Audio is very very low. Audio is very low. Okay. Are you able to uh, listen, sir? Uh. Very, very feeble. I am not able to not able to make out. Next time, okay, we can talk in person. No problem. Okay. In Are any students from university colleges uh, interested to impose the questions to Dr. Nair, sir? Please welcome. Hello, sir. Um, hello. Okay. Uh, sir, sir, I'm I'm sir. looking from Mysore University. Sir, uh, first of all, I thank you for your inspiring speech, sir. Uh, I think okay, uh, uh, the questions. Sir, hello. Direct ask questions. Who is talking? Yeah, yeah. Hello, sir. Sir, sir, I'm audible, sir. Yeah, you're yeah, audible. Yeah. But I do not know who the who the speaker is. Sir, I'm Likit Gowda. Oh, Likit, Likit, oh, go on, go on, Likit, go on. Sir, first of all, uh, thank you for inspiring. Uh, thank you for your inspiring speech, sir. <laughs> okay. Thank I think you. definitely it will uh, it will helpful uh, who it will helpful who dreaming to become an entrepreneur. Very good. <laughs> uh, sir, actually, my question um, my question is uh, nowadays is it uh, is a COVID time. Yeah. Um, me, uh, many of the farmers facing the price fluctuation problem. And also the entrepreneur also what uh, problem? because the, what problem the price price fluctuation problem price, sir price, price fluctuation yeah huh. because of these problems uh, many of the entrepreneur entrepreneurs also facing the problem hello Likit I would say I would say one thing this is this prob this is no this is under no one's control this is under okay. no one's control and uh, in all industries. it has really uh, had a great uh, negative impact so we have to somehow live with it uh, see this will also pass this will also go 
okay we have to just wait for the situations to improve nothing else we can do now all industries all industries face to this problem at least people are getting some price there are cases where people completely had to lose their crop lose their um, shut their uh, production facility uh, we are not in a position to address that issue as of now uh, we believe that the things would improve that's the only thing we can say now i think uh, everybody is done with professor jagdish uh so this is pradeep uh, the farmer from uh, uh, bidar district uh, i actually a uh, budding farmer for sericulture i want to understand what is that support in terms of uh, the the market uh, saleable in terms of saleability like you know kind of import we do from the china and probably other countries are we what is that we are looking at you know we are we are not talking about the increase in production but the saleable uh, of those the product after importing i don't think we are able to meet the requirement of domestic production we have not reached that stage it's not yet a surplus but again there is a demand and supply circle cycle i would say Uh, every time the demand is not exactly there it's not the matching the demand and the supply that sort of a disbalance happen but as such uh, i don't know whether we have reached a state where we can uh, stop import because with the moment we start speaking about import uh, curtailment then uh, the weavers who use the imported uh, imported rosin they are in trouble so as a government uh, government will uh, look at the balancing everybody's interest so i am not very sure whether um, uh, we will not we will be in a position to stop import in the near future anyway this is being a policy matter this has to be discussed at a higher level we will see uh are you hearing me sir dr nair sir yeah 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 uh at the outset uh, on behalf of uh, the uh, university of mysore and the department of sericulture science and all the uh, faculty members uh, teachers who have retired from our department and all the uh, active participants students fraternity scientists farmers entrepreneurs from the university of mysore participant from karnataka participant from the central silk board participants from the different universities all over india at the outset i would like to uh, thank uh, dr k sashindra nayar for his uh, excellent uh, presentation encompassing all the uh, strategies <clears throat> criteria procedures involvement to excel their to become an entrepreneur in the mulberry silkom seed sectors <coughs> based on his uh, experience working almost from 31 years in the central silk board it is a pleasure and a humble Uh, grateful to you sir for your nice uh, outstanding information that is scattered on the faces of the youngsters a uh, lot of uh, the students who are uh, lagging behind the opportunity in the state and the central government are uh, getting a job at least uh, this is one of the very relevant uh, useful webinar session uh, that could uh, make a creature of opportunities to excel their on own to become an entrepreneur on behalf of my own on behalf of department of sericulture on behalf of university of mysore we are very much thankful to you dr k sashindra nair sir and uh, he is a very a generous 
gentleman. As far as uh, my experience and association with him, almost from 20 years, uh, a good friend of mine, in fact, very senior to me, uh, very humble and lovely. And uh, on behalf of all our uh, the faculty members who are here, Professor H.V. Manjunath, <coughs> Professor B. Sanapa, uh, I am extremely wholeheartedly thankful to you, sir, for your the congregation of all your ideas, experience, achievements, and guidelines that you have given at this occasion. And thank you so much, sir, for your kind time that you bear with us and uh, pulled all your knowledge to and transferred your knowledge to uh, the youngsters and uh, all the uh, sericulturists. Thank you, sir. Professor Jagdish. Thank you, sir. Humbled. I'm really humbled. And yeah. thank you. Thank you, everybody, for listening to me for so long. Thank you very uh, much. Kamala Sun. Nair, sir. Ah. Kamala Sun. Thank you. Thank you. I am Sashindran. Sashindran. Kamala Sun is an actor and Nair is a good speaker. <laughs> uh, I thank uh, Professor G. Subramanya, sir, Professor D. Manjunath, uh, Professor uh, uh, Basuraj, sir, and all the scientists. I don't know the names of the participants uh, for their active involvement. Though they are very seniors, uh, still they are enthusiastic to. Uh, participate in this uh, webinar. I am thankful to you, sir, all the, even I could not remember the names, uh, but still I feel that your active participation has given more value on this webinar session. And uh, thank you, one and all.